This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K balanced on a Crane 2 3-axis stabilizer gimbal. This gimbal has a follow focus wheel on the side that lets this servo motor adjust the gear, the lens gear. Now, because this camera is so wide, you will need a way to shift the weight of the camera over. You'll have to do that either with a uh, a cheese plate on the bottom, um, an offset plate, or I'm using this small rig cage. The reason why I ended up going with the cage is because I'm using this external hard drive solution with this camera using a USB-C. The original cable that came with the T5 hard drive is actually, um, it's a round cable and it's a lot longer, it's about a foot. So there was a lot of excess cable, so I was able to find this high-speed USB 3 cable, and, and it's flat uh, on Amazon, so there's a link to that in the description. This is the servo attachment that attaches to the front of the gimbal and then you can align it to any of your lenses. The servo comes with uh, two of these gear teeth that you can put on different lenses, but these are generic and you can just order these online. You can even get the ones that are seamless and don't have a connection piece and you can just order them for all your lenses. Even though I do use this excess gear teeth uh, part of the cable as a visual reference point when I'm focusing, uh, with the touch to focus on the camera. If I'm using a native lens, this is right now the 50. So if I was using the 12 to 35 uh, Panasonic lens, it had sports touch to focus. So I would be able to um, put the excess cable in an upward position where I can v visually see that it's vertical. And then when I tap to focus, that is now my focus point for where the cable is. And then I can follow my second subject or I can find my focus on my second subject and then I visually use the cable, the excess cable as my reference point for spot B. Then the follow focus can be mounted any direction you want. I chose it to be this direction because then if I need to quickly remove the lens or the, um, the camera off the thing, I can just loosen it up and then pull it down like this and then slide it off. Um, but you also the teeth on this are up in the front. So if I had this facing upwards, this would be turned around the other direction and then my follow focus would be uh, sitting farther forward than my, than my lenses. So I mounted it like this and then this servo is hooked up with a cable to the gimbal which allows you to use the wheel on the side to do your focusing. This gimbal also has a DC output port on the side that lets me power the camera directly from there. Um, so if that's how you're going to use your battery solution, then you'd only be changing the batteries in this. Sometimes when I'm using these lenses, like an EF lens with an adapter, um, because the tap to focus does not work, sometimes this, this gear mount will get in the way and it'll hit the motor before the lens is focused on what I'm trying to focus on. So in that case, I will have to um, unscrew this motor, pull it down, so then to make sure that you're gonna have plenty of clearance, I'll do a full circle on this, and then I'll make sure that this passes where the motor's gonna be. And then I know for the rest of the focal range, I'm gonna have all the way this entire focal range too. Okay, I'm gonna switch lenses. And to do that, I just shut off the gimbal. I'm just gonna disconnect the lens. I'm gonna put the new one on. I'm gonna rebalance the camera. You can see it kind of falls back. I'm just gonna loosen up the side, push it forward just a little bit. Okay, now that that is back on, I'm gonna turn back on the gimbal. So now I have the 50 millimeter on with the Comlight EF adapter. I'm gonna line this up, and now I'm gonna check the focus. It's a lot easier to focus with the native lenses because I can tap to focus. There's a lot of different accessories you can get with these gimbals. One is a dual handle setup where it attaches to the middle base and then you have two handles over to the side and it makes it a lot easier to control and get smoother shots. However, I've noticed that the two handles all the way out to here is a little bit wide for walking in between, um, in between chairs, like at a wedding or an event. So I actually removed one of the handles and that also made it so my left handle is the follow focus or is the gimbal. So instead of having two handles over here and then trying to figure out a solution to get this follow focus wheel now on your other handle, which they do make a wireless remote and then they do make uh, handles where they can attach directly to the thing. 
I just took off the side of the handle so that way when I attach this, the gimbal itself is my left handle and then I can just use all the built-in stuff. It makes it a lot easier because it's a, it's a much smaller compact solution and it's really easy to just remove this bar if even this sometimes gets too wide and then I can go back to just the single-handed setup. These gimbals only do uh, panning, uh, tilting, and rotation. Um, so when you're walking, sometimes you'll get up and down movements. And in that case, I'll use this um, fifth access stabilizer made by Scotty Make Stuff. It's just like a 3D printed uh, stabilizer, but it has this dampening um, adjustments in here. So based on different weights that I can do, I can adjust the dampening in here. And this setup, uh, he actually makes a handle that you can put the wireless remote in. So when you're using this setup, it is kind of hard to switch to one hand because the whole thing will drop down. Um, you know, cause sometimes I'll tap the screen to adjust a setting. So it is a little bit harder with this, but you get used to it because the camera's still on a stabilizer. When I do let go of this handle, I, I know to just lift my hand in the air and I can actually keep the shot. When you have the dual handle set up, it is a lot easier to, uh, hold the entire gimbal with one hand while you're tapping the screen and adjusting a setting. Now with these stabilizers, you just loosen this part up over here, lift up your gimbal, put down the tripod feet, and then you can just slide it right through. And you just tighten this down up here. Okay. And then this is my, uh, my fifth axis of the stabilization. Sometimes I'll stick a monopod on the bottom of the gimbal and that lets me do shots over the crowd like during dancing or group shots like a boom. And because this camera is so wide you won't be able to go into inverted mode because the motor will hit. But it's not that hard to readjust this adjustment arm on the back so I usually just slide it over. I'll flip the entire camera over and then just rebalance that side. But it usually doesn't take very long to do that and that's ready to go. 